Sure. So uh, for decades, the defendants have made a number of products, hair relaxer products, which are meant to uh, relax the bond in curly hair. And the chemicals in these products have evolved over time, first beginning with lye. There are formulations that have had formaldehyde. Uh, everything you can imagine has been in these products. So there are a time, and even now, some of the products have types of chemicals called uh, endocrine disruption chemicals, but that's just one category of some of the chemicals that we understand to be problematic. Um, so there are a number of chemicals at play, and, I, and I'll talk about the studies in a moment, um, that ultimately impacted the health state of these women and led to some deaths. Of course, we have wrongful death cases um, in the MDL at this time and, and thousands of estates that will be represented across the country. Um, and so this had been an issue um, with regards to the, some of the categories of chemicals over time that a lot of scientists had looked into and health professionals had looked into. And in October of last year, we refer to it as the Chang study. Uh, there was a study released showing 4.1 times uh, the, it developing, uh, the risk of developing uterine cancer as a result of using hair hair relaxers four or more times per year. And a lot of that's supported by, if you think about the exposure of the individual, you know, putting those types of chemicals on your scalp, you know, on your hair for an extended amount of time, pretty consistently for a lot of people. For some people, three weeks, uh, every, you know, every three weeks, every four weeks, and I'm talking about for decades wow. for some folks. Um, there's also a white study uh, that that is strongly relied on in terms of the increased exposure, um, two times the increased exposure for ovarian cancer. And, and those are the studies that are helping to lead the charge in terms of what the main injuries are in the MDL. And they are uterine and ovarian cancer, to be clear. Um, and so aside from those two studies, um, a body of scientific work that we will advance in the litigation, um, you know, supporting our general causation theories about why these women develop ovarian and uterine cancer. Um, the first case that was filed uh, was with Ben and I on behalf of Jenny Mitchell, similar to what Lou Ruby said, began using hair relaxer as a very young um, child used it well until she was almost 30, where she developed uterine cancer and had to have a full hysterectomy. So we're talking about pretty systematic exposure, right? Um, for some folks, three weeks, yeah. four weeks, um, every month for years. Uh, we're talking about chemicals that are known to be toxic, and we're talking about a product that is known to be toxic and that is the subject of significant studies that have been released and a lot of experts that are prepared to weigh in on what the issues are. Um, the damages as we talk about ovarian cancer, uterine cancer, women with hysterectomies and everything that comes with it, including early onset of menopause, which has a host of health issues, as you could imagine, in addition to the inability sure. to biologically bear children. Um, a lot of our claims are around exactly that, the failure to warn, which they were obligated to um, it's really important as we talk about the claims and what their obligations are to understand that this isn't a drug case, it's not a medical device case, it's a cosmetics case. And there is a very specific S a CFR that governs um, cosmetics and sets the standards. So they had an obligation to warn if, if it may cause health issues in individuals and they fail to do so. Um, there are a number of consumer claims, and I'm talking really primarily about the personal injury claims at this time. Um, as you're aware, a number of class claims have also been filed uh, by, by Jennifer at Alstock and some others have also filed class claims. Um, and those are the bucket of claims that we have right now. And we imagine there are many more coming down the, coming down the pipeline. <laughs>